Dennis Lehane, welcome. We're at the Los Angeles Times Festival of Books, and you're sitting down with PBS Book Feed now. Great to have you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so this is the uh, a new book. Yes. The Joe Coughlin book. Uh, yep. I was asking you off camera what you call this. It's not necessarily a trilogy. You said, tell me how you perceive these new books. This one's called World Gone By, by the way. World, I consider three standalones that are connected by a bloodline, which is the Coughlin family. So uh, Joe, who is now 38, I believe, in this book, uh, he was in. Live, he was a star of Live By Night, in which he was 20 to 27, I believe. And then he was a little boy, very minor character in The Given Day. So, um, but each of the books is meant to, to look at, really, if anything, they look at father and son issues through three different sets of fathers and sons. Uh, and you, we've gone a little further on this, in the story now. Yep. Tell us about what it is about this uh, scenario, this world that you've created that is so attractive to you. Well, I, I just wanted, I loved sort of the, the American history between the wars. And, and that, was, that was really where I started, was the, the given day begins practically on Armistice Day in 1918. And then this one ends middle of World War II. I didn't originally intend that, but that's the way it just worked out. So I just, I just find that time period very rich and simultaneously extremely corrupt and extremely innocent. So, and once you, I moved the action of the books towards uh, the Latin Quarter of Tampa, it picked up a very kind of Casablanca-esque feel, which I enjoyed. But I was just thinking, the more I read about Ybor City, which is the Latin Quarter of Tampa, in that time period, it was filled with, it was filled with revolutionaries, and it was, um, it was filled with exiles, and it was filled with gangsters, and it was filled with union, union organizers, and, and um, Cuban cigar workers, and uh, it just felt, that's what I meant by Casablanca, it felt like that world, not the real Casablanca, right. but the world of that film, a world of sort of refugees and revolutionaries and romance, you know, so that's what I wanted to. Joe Coughlin is a character that, you, that I find myself constantly rooting for. He's in a, he's, he lives in a world of corruption and, mm -hmm. and all these things, and yet I find myself completely uh, behind him. He's like, how do you do that? Which how is you, weird, yeah. right? Well, what you do is you don't judge the character. The, the, what I understand about Joe is, you know, Joe's a gangster. Joe has a lot of blood on his hands. His, his um, folly is that he thinks that he may be able to um, atone for it. Uh, if you will, and particularly in this book, uh, he may be able to escape the grasp of it. And uh, but what makes I think all bad people interesting is the vast majority of them don't know that they're bad. They wake up the same day. They wake up the same way we wake up. They wake up with the same desires. I would like to have happiness. I would like to protect my children. I would like maybe to fall in love. I mean, I think it's all connected. So with Joe, he he doesn't know that he's actually. He's a pretty bad guy yeah. <laughs> until somebody says it to him late in the book. Somebody says, um, you, you've, you, you've come under the impression that feeling bad about the bad things you do makes you good. And it doesn't work that way. Yeah. And that's, that's sort of the, the crux of this character. You know, um, you look at any of the great things that deal with, with gangsters, and, and you're starting from an essential premise, which is, yes, gangsters are very bad people, but they're also mirrors of capitalism. And so is the gangster much worse than, say, the banker or the stockbroker who knowingly wipes out the fortunes of hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of people because they wanted to play fast and loop with stock and they wanted to have another yacht? Are they worse? I think that's the essential question of the sort of the gang. It's not that they're better. Gangsters aren't better, but they're holding up a mirror to the rest of our society saying, why does this group over here get the imprimatur of respect as greedy capitalists, but this group over here gets treated as if the, you know, the great unwashed. Yeah. So when I wrote this, I was just writing a book about a man who is the golden goose, who is moving for, makes money for all his friends, threatens nobody, and moves easily between high society and low society, and is the bridge, is beloved between all communities, and then somebody whispers in his ear that somebody is going to kill him, which makes no sense. And that becomes the driving engine of the book. So. Yeah, and it, it's a tension that underlies the entire book. You're always just waiting for something. Um, the interesting thing about the way you've written these books, though, is that in a way it doesn't necessarily matter what happens to Joe. You can continue to find a way to write this bloodline if you want to continue mm -hmm. something along. 
Oh um, yeah, the bloodline from the given day is still it's it it went and it and it spread. So we know that he has Joe has two other brothers out there. Um, we know uh, that he has a child. Uh, there's also in the given day there was the Lawrence family, which mm-hmm. is an African American family. So were I to want to continue doing this, which right now I don't know if I will, my current novel I'm writing is completely contemporary. But if I were, then, um, then yeah, I have, the, uh, I have the bench. I have a bench that I can, I can pluck somebody off and say, go, yeah, go play show characters. I'm ready for you to explore this one. But tell me about uh, how that decision process for you to write, which book you're going to write next and where it's going to come from. I remember when we, again, when we talked about The Given Day, that was a, a big leap, a big change for you. Mm. And yeah. since then you've... You're, you know, you're sort of doing a bunch of different things now, but yeah. tell me how you make that decision about where the next one's going. I, the answer is I don't. Uh, I never know until one book's done, it's down, and then I start fishing for the next idea. And whatever I do. How do you idea, do that? What are you fishing? What, what's the process? I, it, that's where it gets really arty. You yeah. know, you, you, I, you sit in a room, you stare at a wall, you stare at a ceiling. You try and kind of let your mind go. You do a lot of bike rides. Uh, I get a lot of ideas in showers, taking showers first thing in the morning. Um, you don't, I don't know the mystical place it comes from, and I'm not sure I want to. Um, there's a great line in um, All the Pretty Horses, where'd you get the gun? And he says, the getting place. That's kind of where do you get your ideas, the getting place? I don't know. Uh, and, uh, but once it does capture me, and I can only write when I'm really passionate. Um, I know it, and I and I go forging forward. Um, just go, I go charging on ahead. So a bell rings and it's there, and you know it. And you know it, and you and you know when it's you. You try for a while, sometimes another idea, but then you shelve it because it, it's not quite, it's not grabbing you the same way. So um, my next novel that I'm just again just embarking on is very. Icy and Hitchcockian, and 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 very different than probably anything. It's closest, the closest kin it has in any of my books would probably be Shutter Island, but without the gothic, without the um, so no characters, characters you never met before. Absolutely, really self-contained, super, super self-contained. It's really the story of a marriage, um, as as a marriage that is in turmoil and maybe some other things as well. And it's, I'm, not, I'm not trying to make a connection to your own family here, but I am curious about how uh, your family, your girl, you know, you have kids, mm-hmm. you, they're getting older, they're, you know, your, your life continues to evolve and change. How has that affected your writing? It's made me more, uh, very more organized in my process. Uh, I punch the clock more. I get in there at 7 o'clock in the morning, I write because I know I have to be home or might have to pick up one of my girls at school at three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, it becomes much more rigid mm-hmm. in terms of how I work, which has made me produce a lot more. Uh, because before I was kind of like, ah, you know, I'll write this morning, I won't, so I'll get around to it, I'll write tonight, I'll write when I feel like it, I'll play a little Madden, I'll, you know, I mean, it was, it was a very um, scattershot process. Now it's very, very routine. So it's like, it's sort of sharpened the professional side of It has completely it's sharpened the professional side of it, yeah, yes. that's interesting. Um, yes, it's made me far less uh, arty, I guess. Um, so. And you're still doing TV. We, we mentioned TV. Boardwalk Empire. What else are you doing in television? These days? I've got three different uh, TV shows in various stages of development that I'm developing that I've written. Uh, one was with Showtime, one's with HBO, one's with WGN America. So do you approach these... Um, these folks or do they come to you you because you've you've written everyone knows about your work in the wire and now boardwalk empire so yeah each, i'm usually approached you? i'm usually approached because um, i'm still waiting for the dennis lehane production company to come out of this that you're, you're developing projects for television or well, web or whatever. well i am developing projects i do have a, a production company that would end up being on the log, logos but uh i'm not um uh how do i put it i'm not a mogul by any means i'm just developing my own projects but they have been brought uh, in two, two circumstances. They were brought to me by producers. And then we went and we did what's known as pitching a network, and we sold the networks on it. Well, your new book, Will Gone By, Dennis Lehane. Very excited about this one. Thank um, you. I wish you all the best of luck. Thanks for visiting us again. My pleasure. Thanks and a lot. This a, was great. Always a great talk. Thanks. Thanks.